what's up my name is Technoba here for troubleshoot and welcome back to another video in this quick video i'll be showing you how to set up your own paper mc server for minecraft 1.18 i'll try and keep this video short in the description down below you'll find a download link for paper mc currently these builds are experimental but of course you are able to use them and set up your server and of course this video guide will apply to the future all you have to do is click this download link on the left hand side for the latest version available for the Minecraft version you want to play. You can choose at the very top what you'd like. Currently 1.18, 1.17.1 are available and Waterfall over here, which is their fork of bungee cord. Anyways, after downloading this file, click keep and create a new folder on your desktop or somewhere that you'll remember it called say paper 1.18 or whatever you'd like your server to be called. All we're going to do is drag and drop this jar file into this folder and we've now really installed our server and we're ready to get things going. At this point, you'll need Java installed and up to date, for which you'll find a link in the description down below if you have issues running it using the file we're about to create. Right click, hover over new and click text document. We'll be renaming this file, including .text to start.bat. Then when you see this prompt, hit yes or enter. If you didn't see that prompt or the file icon didn't change, you likely don't have file extensions shown. Click view at the very top and make sure file name extensions has a tick next to it. Then you'll be able to rename it start.bat. It'll prompt you about the change and you'll be able to right click and click edit to open it in notepad. Inside of here, copy and paste the text from the description down below. Java XMX 4G Java paper.jar no GUI. What you need to do is make sure that this name over here matches the jar file inside of your folder. This will of course need to be updated as you update the paper jar file. So I'll slowly double click on this to rename it, copy absolutely everything, head back to the text file and paste it in here, making sure that this matches the file in our folder. When it does, we can save this file and just before we close out of it, we need to change how much RAM we're giving the server. In order to find this out, Hold Control Shift and press Escape to open up your Task Manager and we'll be heading across to the Performance tab at the very top, then Memory. In the top right hand corner, you'll see the total amount of RAM in your computer and down here you'll see the In Use and Available on your computer. The Available is what you can theoretically give your server, though you shouldn't really. Why? Well, what's being used on your computer now is for background programs, browsers, etc, etc. You need to keep some of the available RAM for your Minecraft client itself. On top of that, other programs, Discord, Steam, etc. And of course, you'll need to keep a tiny bit of extra RAM for Windows in the background. The rest of it that you have available after figuring out how much that will take is what you can give your server, or at least roughly. You can't give your server more than you have available while you're playing the game. So because I have a ludicrous amount of RAM on my computer, I can happily give this 8G, 80 gigabytes and not worry about anything too much. I'll save the file with Control S, close it, and now we're able to run start.bat to generate a couple of extra files here after the server quickly sets itself up. As you can see, it failed to start. That's fine. Press any key to continue and open the new eula.txt file here. Change false to true, save it, and close it. Before we launch up our server again, you can open server.properties here where you can customize things like the MOTD. On top of this, you'll need to make note of the server port here or change it if you're going to be running more than one Minecraft server on your computer. You'll need to remember this number later on so we can port forward if you'd like people outside of your local Wi-Fi network to connect and play on your server. Anyways, We'll now go ahead and fire up our server by double clicking start.bat. This will then create a couple of extra folders, including a plugins folder where we can drop server plugins and reload everything to get them working properly. On top of this, you'll also see bucket.yml as well as other files here that you can customize to customize how your server works and take control of it. From here, your server is now starting up and we're able to join it in just a moment using any normal Minecraft client, including vanilla, Optifine, etc, etc. So I'll fire up the Minecraft launcher here and open up Minecraft 1.18. Then head across to multiplayer, click add a server, and in the server address you can either type localhost or 127.0.0.1. Click done to add it to your server list and you should see it working here. 
Then simply double click on it to join it. And on the window over here, you'll see some text saying that you've joined the server successfully. Congratulations, you're now playing on your own PaperMC 1.18 Minecraft server. Your friends are also able to join, assuming that they're on the same Wi-Fi network as you, and you don't have a third-party firewall or Windows firewall blocking the server from talking to the internet. However, that won't be the case for most of you. If you have a friend sitting next to you on the same Wi-Fi network or Ethernet network, all they have to do is connect to your computer's local IP address. However, more than likely, if they're outside of your local network connection, you'll need to go ahead and port forward to allow them to do so. In order to do so, you'll need to know your local IP anyways. In order to find it, hold start and press R, then type CMD in this window here. Hit enter, and in this new window, type IP config, enter once again, scroll up, and look for the way that you're connected to the internet. For me, it's Ethernet adapter Ethernet, and the IPv4 address here is your local IP address. This is what someone sitting next to you can use to join your server, again, assuming no firewall, or you can use this for port forwarding later on. If you'd like to learn how to do port forwarding, I've got a really simple guide in the description down below that shows you port forwarding from start to finish, and it includes multi-router port forwarding if you have more than one router between you and the internet. It's incredibly important to go through if you're going to be port forwarding for your friends to play over the internet. Now, of course, you'll be playing and having fun, but what about when you're done? In order to save and close your server inside of this window here, Type save hyphen all and hit enter to save your entire server, inventories, etc, etc. Then type stop and hit enter to gracefully bring the server to a close. Every player will be disconnected. You can press any key to continue and congratulations, you've now set up your own server, saved it and shut it off. From here, you can do practically anything you want with your server, install plugins, etc, etc. It's yours to play around with. For free, the sky is your limit. But anyways, that's about it for this quick video. In the description down below, you'll find more Minecraft 1.18 guides, including spigot server guides, etc, etc. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Technoba here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.